Um, I'm going to play a little bit off topic now, um, just because I want to raise this this issue. And you don't you don't know who might who might be listening, um, and it does fit together a little bit. Um, last last summer we started a conference at the Bikeshed Theatre during the dark times uh, about management theory at work in radio because it might help us move into social media or when FM dies as John thinks it's going to and all sound is just little bits and pieces that are combined by the audience or the robot in various ways and so background to that that um, I went oh, is well. The ma- management theory at work started out as a conference in Lancaster, and the, another conference that's been there a couple of times is about network learning. And I think the two things do cross over because once the technology gets so far, it is going to affect the the organisation and the management and so forth. I think. Uh, so I'm going to play this extract because the. The content from the conference I went to is, is now on YouTube, or some of it, the, the opening plenaries and the uh, final panel. And uh, I've, I've done a, a, a playlist on YouTube, which you, you, can, you can find as Network Learning Conference 2016. But I'll probably add it to a, t- a tweet from We Not Know, W-E-N-O-T-N-O. So if you if you look for W E N O T N O you'll find a link to this eventually. And I'm I'm not gonna play all of this, it's 40, 46 minutes, but I'll I'll play it till till the, the point that, that I I think is interesting and just add my own my own com- comment on it. Uh so so this is a li- fi- final plenary network learning conference this, this year. So just just starting with a, a logo. Um. Okay, thanks. I'm Steve Wright. Uh, I work at Lancaster University as a learning technologist. Um, and I first came to encounter network learning from working with David McConnell, Gail Popcoma, and uh, Maria Zenios uh, when we were setting up the PhD Technology Enhanced Learning Program. Uh, I liked the, front of the term. I read a few, I read one of the books, and I was really kind of intrigued and entangled into it, especially by the work of Steve Fox with a focus on informal learning, um, which opened up a lot of ideas and interests for me. Something I've not seen as much focus on recently. Um, it feels as if official learning spaces have maybe colonised that. It's all the MOOCs have kind of colonised informal learning. And I think maybe there is still a space for us to look at the fascinating talk about Ravelry and just how amazing Ravelry is as an informal learning space that doesn't say you've got to start then, enrol, you've got 10 weeks, and you've got to finish your knitting. <laughs> and it's, I think that we've still got a lot to learn from informal learning. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm Peter Jendrick for the University of Applied Sciences in Zagreb, Croatia. I'm a newcomer to network learning, so uh, two years ago I went to Edinburgh with my first tenancy. Uh, I think that I actually entered the field of learning by accident, of network learning by accident, meaning that uh, I've been working quite a lot and for quite a long time in fields that could be called uh, e-learning, digital learning, technology enhanced learning. And at one point, actually, I found out about this community and I found out that a lot of the many things that I have been actually working before are network learning. So I joined the community. I found here some really, really, really great theories and some also really supportive people. And I continued my work in the field of network learning, although I'm still not sure about this terminology thing. I mean, we can talk about it later, but for now, yeah, I'm, uh, I've been actually doing network learning before I knew about network learning and what network learning was. I think this is the most important thing because I believe that there are many people out there who also do network learning without being aware of the existence of network learning in a way that you find it here within this community. So, Mike Johnson, I've been thinking about this conference for quite a while. Um, I think I could have come to the 2002 conference, and I probably should have. And I think I just didn't feel like it was good enough, actually. Um, but I probably was, and should have just come anyway. 
Um, I was doing a sea salt masters in Lancaster at that time. Um, there's Hillary and one or two others still know um, from that, um, that, that course, which was very, very useful. Um, and there's some great duties involved in that and also um, very important to the conference. And so they really drew me into their attending in 2004. Um, so I still have the badge, I don't have a t-shirt, I don't have a t-shirt. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been just delighted to be involved in a conference which takes early technology seriously, but also um, all the contextual factors around that. And um, you know, it takes a, a good, it requires uh, empirical work and, and and uh, good critical work, and that's unfortunately still fairly rare. Um, although having said that, um, there can be critical work without it being supportive work. Um, and uh, referring back to the keynote previous conference, um, we were grateful to have Neil Salmon along. I love his work, but um, it, you know, uh, there is a sort of uh, a level of criticality there, which um, it's, it doesn't seem to be as a supportive criticality, which I find in this conference, and it's just a wonderful place to be, uh, and, and for, for somebody like me to, to grow up in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow, what can I say after that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm from the University of Cape Town, which is in South Africa, which is very far away, and the exchange rate is really terrible, and we get um, funding to come to the conference once every second year unless you get invited and paid. So the question of which conference to go to gets a lot of attention in the circles that I'm in. And I always recommend network building. I feel like I'm a poster child, you know. Um, but I really like this conference for the reasons that Mike just said, actually. I think it's a serious, critical space that manages to be supported at the same time. Because I get quite frustrated with research that is critical for the sake of being critical and is clever, um, but actually doesn't end with, so what do we do? How do we actually engage with this? And how does this interface with practice? So this link between theory and practice that is happening all the time is incredibly valuable. I also like the fact that it is, I know it's generally in the UK, not always, but I think it's generally in the UK. I like the fact that it's broader than the UK. I like at least the European connections. I like the fact that not everyone is a first language English speaker. Um, I think that's really important, actually, in terms of extending diversity. I'm going to, going to fade, fade it out there because uh, I think about five, minute, five minutes or six minutes. We're not, it's almost six minutes. So a, the, a couple of things. When they, when they say the MOOC is taking over informal learning, I think that's just the way it's designed. The, the, the people who run the MOOCs may think, that everybody follows it exactly as it's intended to be. But I think the fact that people have a look, drop out and go somewhere else or maybe come back to it or sign up the next time it comes around, I'm just basing that on my own experience or people I meet and talk to. So I, I think actually the MOOC content is much more informal than uh, some people in universities think it is. And the the other thing, I'd, I'd just like this um, comment about, about critique because I think, I think critique has got to be part of study, but the the idea that the, there has to be practice there as well, I think is is very good, a very good idea, because it makes the conference tolerate practice as as part of what what's going on. So I I think that's a very good development. I think it is a development actually. Anyway, I'm probably rambling off. We'll come. We can come back to this future time but I think if John was here he'd say we should we should get on and play some music. So this is um this is